All right, guys, so let's take a look at these calculations here. We're going to make use of the Y and the Delta configurations that we looked at in the previous videos. Uh, now, for this one, this one's a little bit misleading. I've put source there, but we're going to add some stuff in. So we have no idea what the primary of the transformer is. But this side right here with the source, this is our secondary of our transformer. And we can see here with the values that are given that the voltage right here is 208 volts. Right, so I have a delta secondary feeding a delta resistive load. Okay, they're balanced in that each of these guys is 10.4 ohms. Right, so we'll deal with unbalanced loads later on. But each of these resistor values are balanced at 10.4 ohms. Okay, so our first step is to look at uh, our voltage here and determine whether this 28 volts is a line voltage or a phase voltage. Well, that voltage is from here to here, right? So that's external of our circuits. So we said in the previous video that if it's outside of the circuit, then that value is a line value. So that's our line voltage. Okay, so we can drop in our line voltage here. So we got two eight volts line. Uh, but we can also see that, or remember that with these guys, they're more of a parallel circuit. And so for these delta circuits, we know that V line is equal to V phase, right? So that voltage right there is the same as this voltage right here, which is the same as this voltage right here. So we can see that the voltage on the phase is 208 volts on the phase as well. Okay, if that voltage is 28, then this guy right here for our load is going to be 28 as well. They're a mirror image of each other. And that is going to be our phase voltage again. Okay, so these guys are a mirror image of each other. 28 volts line, 28 volts phase. These guys are exactly the same. And here, this is a mirror image here, so our 28 volts on the phase as well. So if we have a delta sec source and we have a delta load, they're going to be the same values. It's going to be later on where we have like a, a Y source and a delta load that the values will be different. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to take a three phase circuit and break it down into a single phase circuit. So we have 208 volts coming over here. That's 28 and this is 28 and the voltage we've seen on the phase is now 208 volts. That 28 is now impressed across a resistor at 10.4 ohms. So we're going to take a three phase circuit and break it down. This is our phase value. We're going to break this guy down into a single phase Ohm's law circuit. Okay, so we've got 28 divided by 10.4. Let me just bring up the calculator here. All right, you guys in my class always laugh when I say that math is not my strong point and you say, what are you teaching theory for? But math is not my strong point. I can't do this in my head. So 28 divided by 10.4 uh, gives me 20 amps. Okay, so I've got 20 amps. And that value that we just found is on the phase. So let's go for a different color here for our current. So we have 20 amps on the phase, right? Our phase current is equal to 20 amps because we're putting 28 across 10.4 providing us with 20 amps but we're looking on the inside of the delta okay so our phase current here if you want to put how we found it 28 divided by 10.4 ohms gives us 20 amps on the phase okay the current on the line is always greater than the phase current on a delta circuit we know that our line current is equal to our phase current times root three. So in order to find our line current here, and our line current would be right here on the outside of the circuit, we're going to take our 20 amps and we're gonna multiply that by root three. So let's find out what that is. So let's see, we need to find our line current. So we'll do 20 amps and we're gonna multiply that by the square root of three. And that gives me 34.64 amps. 
and that is my line value. So I've already got the, the phase there. So this value right here is 34.64 amps. Beautiful. Well, that current is coming from right here, right? That's the same piece of wire. So we've got 34.64 amps on the line. And we've just found that on the delta, on the inside of the delta, it's less current by a factor of root 3. So we'll find that our current on the inside is 20 amps on the phase. Beautiful. Okay, last thing we need to do is we need to find uh, our total wattage and VA. So I've used VA for the secondary, but really we're just looking for wattage because we have a resistive load, right? We don't have any coils or capacitors there yet. So we have a number of ways we can find those values. Let me try just a different pen here, but now that we're finding our power. So for this guy, I can do 208 volts on the line. My line current is 34.64 amps on the line. And I'm going to multiply those guys by root 3. Okay, so let's see. We've got 28 times 34.64 times the square root of 3. That gives me 12,479.63. Cat's going crazy behind me. Uh, let's see. We can also use that line voltage, right? But we can also use the, the phase values as well. So these ones are going to be identical, right? This wattage and this V8 because it's one source and one load. So here we could also do uh, our phase voltage, 28 volts on the phase, times our phase current. Our phase current was what? 20 amps. multiply those guys by uh, not root 3 there's three phases so I've got to multiply those guys by 3 and we should find that that comes to a value that's very close right so that's probably gonna be 12 480 let's check okay so we've got 208 volts we're gonna multiply that by 20 amps on the phase then we got three phases and we got 12 480 Again, don't worry about that small difference that's there, right? So we've got 12,480 VA, we've got 12,479.63. They're exactly the same number, guys. Don't worry about those numbers. Okay, so you can see that they're a mirror, mirror, mirror image of each other. Let's just walk through one more time what we did. We took the 2,8 volts on the line. We found that it was identical voltage in the phase. We took that 2,8 divided by the 10.4, we found 20 amps on the phase. There's 20 amps here and there's 20 amps here, but they're not happening at the same time. So we take the 20 amps times root 3 and it gives us 34.64. That current is flowing on this line right here. So we have 34.64 on the, the line. And on the inside, this winding right here and this winding are both providing 20 amps, just 120 degrees out of phase to provide us with that 34.64 amps on the line. In order to find our VA value, we took our line voltage times line current times root three, and it gave us essentially 12,480, or we can take our single phase values, 28 volts on the phase times 20 amps on the phase times three, gives me 12,480 VA. All right, guys, let's move on to the next one. So we're gonna look, look at the delta to Y, the Y to delta, the Y to Y, and the delta to Y. So we're gonna look at all the different facets um, and configurations that's out there.